For the past 10 years, recent software innovations have had the potential to drastically change the landscape of healthcare. Advances in machine learning have made it possible to extract medical insight from images, videos, and scattered medical texts. Cloud computing has allowed software systems to quickly scale to support millions of people. Of people. All the pieces are there to build transformative healthcare software systems. Unfortunately, history has shown software implementation disasters that have cost money, uh, companies large amounts of money and time. The United Kingdom's NHS electronic patient record system, $12 billion abandoned. Microsoft's health wealth, 12 years in the making, abandoned. Amazon Care, shutting down by December 2022. To prevent such disasters, healthcare software companies need to focus their energies in the beginning of the software development lifecycle especially when implementing life-critical systems. My research explored the importance of software design by modeling a healthcare software system using colored Petri nets. The process involved finalizing some design decisions, creating my system models, and running a simulation to validate my design. The design decisions take into account the constraints and functionality of my system. The physician using the software performs a physical examination by going through the 10 patient assessment steps. The, use, the system utilizes some pre-trained machine learning models from a cloud platform to collect some medical insight from the data collected. To perform these tasks in parallel, I adopted an architectural pattern using Google Cloud's publisher subscriber. After finalizing the process flow and structural aspects of my system, I then began the creation of my system models. The modeling tool utilizes a modeling language called Colored Fundamentally, it consists of four simple entities a place, an arc, a transition, and a token. The models on my slide represent these cohesive components that collectively the structure and workflow of my system. After completion of my system model, the modeling tool makes it very convenient to immediately run a simulation. A simulation run undergoes multiple simulation states, which are defined by the light green token locations on my slide. My simulation run was able to produce a physical examination summary, which represents all the aggregated data generated by the machine learning model. The run also generated some performance metrics, such as service utilization or average response time. With these simulation results, we can validate our design and predict the behavior of our system even before its implementation. Using the approach of modeling and running a simulation, companies can save millions of dollars in time by catching software architectural flaws and improvements to their system earlier in the development. Hopefully, the design methods and validation techniques I've explored during my research will teach and help ensure the success of the next generation of healthcare software systems. Thank you for that presentation uh, and for this, this uh, graphic. Um, why do you think the big genius developers have failed at this? What does your approach bring that they have not? Um, uh, interested? I don't have enough knowledge of this, but I, I'm guessing it's because of the complexity, complexity of the healthcare system in America. There is different state regulations concerning how to do insurance or how to protect patient data, and sometimes some of the patient data is probably fractured from, um, is owned by specific companies or different hospital systems, and sometimes it's not shared to other, another hospital. So there needs, there, needs, there needs to be a standard process to share patient data, and also billing is probably very complicated because you have to incorporate state regulations and federal regulations and then your insurance company into the cost of your healthcare. Or did you have a question? Yeah. This may come from my lack of understanding of software engineering, but what are colored Petri nets? Like, is this built with the software, or is this a physical thing that healthcare providers use? Because we have Petri dishes. Sure. Yeah. Physical things. I was just curious. So the token, um, so tokens are like example data, such as a number or a five, or a name of the person, um, and the tokens live in these models here. And as you're running the simulation, it's moving from a transit using a transition to a specific place, and that's giving you the state of the the behavior of the system at the particular time, right? 
So using these multiple slides, uh, these slides are a, representative, a representation of like a snapshot uh, of your simulation that's happening at a specific time. You can go over an hour, that's 60 minutes. If you have 60 minutes of the slide, that's a representation of the simulation. And all these tokens are going to be moving uh, from place to place. For example, uh, if the patient starts, the patient assessment starts at the skin uh, stage, um, uh, maybe in six minutes it's going to finish the skin assessment and then go to the token we're going to move to the head and sensors page. So the tokens are example data that can, you can use to run your simulation. Okay. Thank you. Thank you so 